Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is many a true nerd, and I have absolutely no idea what I'm going to put on screen uh, during this, I haven't decided uh, at the time of recording this, so there will be something on screen right now, some sort of thing will be on screen. Welcome to, a, well, apparently I said I was going to do the occasional vlog, I'm doing way more than I was anticipating, and that is because, because apparently it turns out my vlogs have extremely special powers because two days ago I did a blog talking about how I think a free and open internet ought to be funded and I suggested that while I basically liked what uh, YouTube does one thing I did think that YouTube could use would be um, a kind of a Spotify style subscription system whereby people could pay a small amount in order to have an ad free experience and less than 24 hours after I said that Google announced that that's not only what they're doing, but that it should be ready, well, we think at the earliest about mid-June. It might be ready in mid-June. It might be a little bit after that point. They haven't actually formally announced a launch date yet. But regardless, I basically said something would be nice, and within a day, Google had made it happen. Like, I am some kind of superhero of YouTube or something. I think this is fantastic for three reasons. I think, firstly... Um, per person, if you sign up to this, then almost certainly the creators that you watch will be getting a better deal and more money than they would do out of uh, watching ads. So it should mean um, for any single person that joins up to this program, it should mean a bit more money for creators. I think it's answering something that a lot of people have always wanted because people were saying in the comments below, so people just hate ads so, so damn much that like even though they understand that ad block hurts creators they just hate ads so much they're going to keep them on anyway so this gives people a legitimate way that they can not have ads but still support their favorite creators and thirdly it gives the viewer choice so now you can choose to either not pay anything and make your contribution through ads or you can choose to pay something and make your contribution directly and not have to sit through ads i like that choice i love it i love it all the time and i i was kind of when this originally was announced on twitter i was kind of really happy about this and then of course i kind of read through the details and i think generally the, res the response has been pretty positive in the youtube community from what i can see most people seem pretty happy with it um the one kind of video that I, I saw that i think kind of was most interesting that made me kind of think and have a dig into this a bit more was um was nerd cubed did one of his um soup with nerd cubed videos uh where he raised a couple of interesting points that i kind of want to make me think a little bit more about this so the key point that he um, actually raised was we don't know exactly how the distribution of funding happens right now because this isn't a Twitch style system. Uh, this isn't a system where you like subscribe to a particular channel. This is a system where you subscribe and then all of YouTube's free of ads and thus the money that you pay in then has to get distributed amongst all the channels uh, that you watch. I think though I like the Twitch system better ideologically I understand where they're coming from because I think Twitch maybe because like Twitch streams can last hours and hours and hours you're not necessarily going to always be watching that many Twitch streams whereas YouTube because like a person might only put out you know uh, even a relatively active YouTube is going to put out maybe one 30 minute video a day you're going to have a lot of subscriptions and if you're browsing you might get for a hell of a lot of people so having to individually pay a subscription payment to all of those I think will get prohibitively expensive and that's not a good experience for the user I think this is the way it had to I think this is the way it had to go but yes um the distribution of funding therefore is a question and I'm going to I'm going to quote exactly what um is in the little statement the new terms of service that YouTube circulated by all its creators. So what they've said is it's going to be as a percentage or of the monthly views or watch time. Now that's really really interesting. Um it obviously gives YouTube a little bit of flexibility in terms of how they're going to split it. And the problem there is obviously it means YouTube can decide how it's going to split their revenue by the views or by watch time. And that suits certain video formats over others. And that's potentially a little bit problematic. So if, for example, you're like basically just a lifestyle vlog channel, then it might be quite easy for you to put out a video every single day or several videos every single day where each of them is five minutes long. And if it's based purely on the number of views, that means you get a big advantage in terms of how subscription revenues are divided. Whereas if you're the sort of channel that spends a huge amount of time, you know, recording, doing post-production, does like an hour long video, does like an hour long special once a week, for example, then that really screws you over. And I see the point there, and obviously the, the opposite is true as well, which is if it's t decided entirely by view time, then that kind of helps the long form, um, that helps the long form videos, and it screws over the short form videos. And I get the point that that is potentially a bit of a problem, but the problem is that bias wouldn't be being introduced 
by this change. That bias already exists because right now 100% of revenue comes from the CPM, the cost per thousand, ad revenue. And that encourages many short videos. So say for example that I could make 10 one minute blogs or one 10 minute blog. In the current situation, CPM ad revenue, I'm massively incentivized to go for the 10 one minute blogs because obviously 10 views gets me 10 times as much income as one view. It encourages content to be split up, it encourages you to do very short parts, it encourages you to you know, just make very insubstantial little snippets. It encourages short, tiny things like, you know, top 10 lists, compilations, trailers, whatever. It, it, it discourages people from making big 30 minute chunky parts. I personally don't like that because when I sit down to make a video, I like to think it's going to be like an episode of a TV show or something. I, I always aim for about 30 minutes before my videos tend to be 20 minutes on the shortish side, 50 minutes if I've massively overshot, but I'm always aiming for about 30 minutes. So I think, a, a, a sh you know, an episode ought to be like a show. And I, I always think of a TV show as like half an hour, that's, that, that's yeah. fair. So the current model already has a bias built in. So I'm going to put a prediction in now. And obviously, as we've established earlier in this episode, I have amazing psychic time powers. So I'm going to be right about this. And I think it's going to overwhelmingly be about watch time, about view times, i.e. the total amount of time you spend watching the content of each channel. And the reason I think that is, is because that will be correcting the historic imbalance of ad revenue. Because for years and years and years, the ad revenue model has been hurting the long form content and favouring the very short form content. So now, as a result, I think that there's going to be two sources of revenue for content creators. There's going to be the ad revenue, which is going to continue to favour people who kind of just get many views as possible, loads and loads and loads of little videos. And there's going to be the sub revenue that's now going to start favouring and hopefully overwhelmingly go to the people who make long form videos and thus get people to sit down and watch hours of content. And the reason I think that YouTube's going to do this is not just a question of like YouTube correcting an, an historic injustice and making something fair. I think it's because YouTube, this, this very totally syncs up with what YouTube's always said and the way they want YouTube to go. Because I think YouTube doesn't want to be a platform where people just skim between 30 second videos of kittens. YouTube wants itself to be a competitor to you know the Amazon and the Netflix and all the other big kind of uh, video players that are coming into the market that are now trying to almost act more like um, TV shows and offering big long series. YouTube has been saying for a while now, um, at least to creators, um, as a viewer you might not have heard this, YouTube likes um, and pays a lot of attention to a channel's total view time, i.e. the amount of time which when a viewer comes to your channel, how long they stay. So if someone comes to one of your videos, watches it for half an hour, and then goes straight into another one of your videos and watches it for another half an hour and then does the same thing a third time, then YouTube says, okay, so you generated an hour and a half of consistent view time. And YouTube says, that's great, that's fantastic, we, we love that. And those videos and that channel is given a bit of a boost by YouTube in, for example, um, search rankings within YouTube. Um, and they've been saying that they've been keeping an eye on view, view times for a long time because they want people to be enjoying and indulging and treating YouTube. Not as a thing that they dabble in when they're bored and just want to look at a video of a puppy playing with a kitten. They want people to actually sit down to YouTube for the evening and watch their YouTube shows. And they like the idea of people sitting down and enjoying, you know, a big long playlist of several hours because then YouTube has effectively replaced television. And, you know, there's obviously less time left for the person to then go and say, oh, I'm going to go watch half an hour of something on Netflix because there's half an hour of something good that you want to watch on YouTube. So this is what YouTube's been going towards for a long time. So I think that's what they're going to do. I think they're going to simultaneously start doing something that's going to reward people who kind of put together longer shows and playlists and longer series and I think that's also simultaneously conveniently albeit probably not entirely intentional though it's a nice consequence it's going to redress a historic imbalance that the CPM ad revenue model has always favoured short form content so that's what I think is going to happen and it will happen because I have magic powers and yeah, I just wanted to kind of quickly, quickly kind of just give an update to confirm that that I am magic and that uh, what I think about the actual program that was announced. And, you know, I, I think that there are risks. There are definitely risks. And I think it's it's up to YouTube to figure out what the best way to do it is. But broadly, 
I'm excited. Broadly, I'm excited, and I think YouTube is doing the right thing. And if I've interpreted this correctly, could be a very, very good thing for creators who make longer episodes of stuff. And I think that's going to be a very good thing for gaming on YouTube in general, because, like, of all the forms, I think we most... We more happily settle into long form because, you know, we do, we do, we complete games and we have series and we have, you know, when we're doing a game, it has to be in part one, part two, part three, and it goes into playlists. And huge numbers of my views come from people viewing through playlists. So basically kind of sitting there and going through hours and hours of content. And that's brilliant. And I think kind of gaming as an entire genre of entertainment on YouTube skews that way heavily anyway. So I think this will be really good for gaming on YouTube. I genuinely do. And I'm hoping it works out the way I think it is. Maybe I'm being hopelessly naive and I should be kind of more panicking about the end of the world, but I think this is a good thing. I think it's going to work out if I've kind of, if I've predicted how YouTube, what they're thinking or what it's going to do, I think it's going to work out well. So there we are. That was just a little bit more from me. A vlog's apparently way more common than I was originally anticipating. Probably not one for a while. I kind of, this went down really well a couple of days back, so I'm going to do more of these, but like not more than like one every couple of weeks or a month or something, or whenever something interesting comes up. I'm not going to make them a regular thing. So there you are, just some follow-up thoughts, and do let me know kind of what you think about what I'm kind of saying there. I don't know if, I don't know, maybe maybe I'm wrong, but I don't, I think it sounds reasonable. Let me know if you think kind of YouTube's thinking something else entirely, but that that's just my instinct on it. So yes, there you go. Let me know in the comments below. I will try and be chatting in the comments again. I do like kind of being involved in the chat when we've got an actual discussion going on. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been Many a True Nerd, and this has been just a little kind of afterthought on the newly announced YouTube subscription system. Thank you very much, and goodbye. Down, 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 get off it. Just hop off. Oh, oh, oh no, oh, that was wrong! I would untie and save you, you understand, but there is a hovercraft. I really hope the bear's not still around. The bear is still around! The bear's still around! The bear's still around! Good news, guys! Elephants here! Hey!